Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for tuning in to episode 28 of A Voice from the Ever Change meditation program. So uh, if this is your first time joining me, I'll just give a little brief synopsis of uh, what exactly I'm doing here. Uh, I'll offer a guided meditation. Uh, we'll go through the breath. Uh, I'll offer some suggestions uh, for sensations that might be arising in the body. And then also uh, the sounds of the present moment. So really allowing different aspects of the present moment to act as an anchor for our awareness. And we'll rest in the present moment for just a few uh, minutes, may maybe less, maybe just a few breaths actually. Uh, resting in that silent space. And in the silent space of meditation, I'll offer a poem that I composed. Uh, when I composed the poem, I was actually meditating as well. So it's, uh, it works in this way. To allow the poem uh, to guide your awareness wherever it may want to go. Allowing the poem to serve as an extension of the guided meditation. And then after the poem, I offer a commentary, again, allowing the commentary to continue guiding you uh, as another aspect of a meditation practice. Then I'll ring the bell, that'll be the end of the meditation. Uh, if you wish to continue meditating there, you may, but uh, at that point, I'll just start talking, uh, probably. That part is totally unplanned, unrehearsed, unscripted. Uh, sometimes I say very little, Sometimes I go off on a tangent, um, and, uh, but I, I try to make it as helpful as possible. That's the idea there. And really that's the idea behind the whole series, is to offer a bit of light, a bit of wisdom, a little bit of encouragement on how we can all deal with the current world crisis. Uh, I've uh, used these uh, teachings uh, that I've learned and collected over the past 35 years uh, to really help me uh, rest in the experience of whatever's arising, including the challenges that arise in coronavirus. And I've not had the virus, fortunately, but friends of mine have, and, uh, and I'm still feeling the effects of lockdown and things like that. Okay, enough rambling, enough rambling. <laughs> I'm going to ring the bell. Uh, yes, uh, before I do that, I just want to mention if there are any questions, I'm hosting a Q&A session on Sunday uh, afternoon at the same time. Uh, so send those questions along, and I will be uh, going through them on Sunday. I might do one sooner than Sunday as well. I've gotten a lot of questions this week, but we'll see. Definitely on Sunday. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> I'll ring the bell. I'll guide us into silence. And uh, we'll take it from there. Enjoy. So allowing the body to rest, allowing the mind to rest, letting any concerns or thoughts of the upcoming days go. Thoughts or concerns of the days past, you can let all of that go as well. Just rest. And allowing your heart to rest, vast and open, like the blue sky. And breathing in and breathing out, allowing attention and awareness to come to the nose, noticing the breath, entering and leaving the nose. Perhaps 
noticing the temperature changing from cooler to warmer in the nostrils as you inhale and exhale. Noticing the breath touching the back of the throat. There might be a dry or a tingling sensation there. You might also notice the rib cage expanding and contracting with each breath. There might be sensations of clothing moving to adjust with the rising and falling of the shoulders, chest, and abdomen as you inhale and exhale. Noticing the back moving out as you breathe in and in as you breathe out. Perhaps also noticing the body straightening up slightly on the in-breath and leaning forward slightly on the out-breath. So we'll rest right there just for a few moments, maintaining awareness on the sensations of the breath. Sensations arising from the nose, the back of the throat, the chest and shoulders and back and abdomen and any other sensations that you might notice arising as a result of the breathing process. And just rest. And if at any time during the meditation you find you're distracted by your thoughts, simply label those thoughts thinking, which will allow the thoughts to dissolve. Gently return back to the present moment. while resting with the breath, allowing awareness to expand to include the sensations of clothing against the shoulders, noticing the arms resting against the body, the hands resting against the body or touching each other, you might also notice sensations of clothing against the back, the weight of the body against the chair, cushion, mat, or floor. Noticing the sensations of clothing against the legs, and the feet against the mat or the floor. There might also be sensations arising from the back of the neck and the sides of the neck. Sensations arising from the ears, the back of the head. There might be sensations arising from the cheeks of the face, the lips and the nose, the eyes. Sensations arising from the forehead and resting attention at the top of the head, the very crown of the head. And while resting with the breath and the body, you might also notice any sounds that are available during this present moment experience. Depending on where you are at this time, you might hear perhaps music coming from next door or a television playing nearby. There might be the conversation of a neighbor or perhaps people walking outside or a car passing by. There might be the sound of an air conditioning unit or 
an electric appliance. Not focusing on any one sound in particular, but noticing the entire field of sounds. Hearing all of the sounds all at the same time. And in addition to any sounds, paying close attention to the quality of still silence within the present moment. There's always this silent space within the sense of hearing. And so we'll rest right there, maintaining open, spacious awareness on the silence and sound sensations of body and breath, and just rest, breathing in and breathing out. The poem, the sound of laughter, a falling tear, the embrace of silence, the absence of fear, the breeze on the skin, a smile in one's eyes, the sound of a bird song, 10,000 goodbyes. Free from clinging and aversion, each experience brings us right back to this. Just this. Only this. Just rest. The commentary. I walk down the street in search of the necessities of life, sugar, coffee, and milk. <laughs> As I turn the corner, there appears in my field of vision a group of school children enthusiastically engaging in a round of hopscotch. Laughter pours out from their mouths and seems to magically land directly on my heart. My mind instantly lets go of the mundane hopes that the corner store will have my favorite coffee bean in stock, the worry that I do not have enough incense on hand for the weekend's meditations, and the stress of holiday shopping, which will inevitably be completed before the end of the month. The warmth of the infectious laughter of children has brought me back to just now. Just this. The sound not only of the infectious chuckles, but also the sound of traffic as the cars zoom by, the sound of a dog barking, a conversation as a couple hastily make their way home before the snowfall. I have returned back to just this present moment where all freedom resides. The bitter grip of loss clenches around my heart. A tightness constricts my chest as if someone had pulled a seatbelt across my body and was pulling it with all the force of a bear. I reach for each breath, gasping through the sudden shockwaves of unexpected loss, 
I feel a tear rolling down my cheek, the salty moistness leaving a path, finding its home in my semi-bearded chin. There it is. Ah, relief. My attention is drawn in by the sensations of the tear, then expanding out through the face, noticing the flush hotness of grief combined with the itchiness of dry skin and the wetness in and around my eyes. I allow my awareness to then expand out through my neck and shoulders where the muscles are allowed and invited to rest into the present moment, letting the emotions of grief, anger, sadness, and confusion just be there. I become aware of my clothing on my shoulders, arms, and back. Noticing my hands clenching by my side, I allow them to rest. I become aware of the sensations of my clothing moving to adjust with the rising and falling of my chest and abdomen as I take each labored breath. In that noticing, the tightness which had been woven across my torso begins to soften. I allow my awareness to then expand out through the rest of my body, experiencing the sensations of clothing against my legs and my feet against the pavement. I then look up and take in the vastness of the blue sky with the puffy white clouds here and there and the occasional birds which seem to dance through my awareness. I hear the sound of the sprinklers watering the dry lawn next door and the robin singing in the tree. And I may even revel in the fact that my favorite song from my teenage years happens to be blaring out of a car window as the driver slowly cruises by. I notice the warmth of the sun in my flesh, on my face and arms. The pain and shock of the news I just received moments ago is still there, fresh, vivid, real, and intense. But now my awareness is including the rest of my experience as well. The anguish of my breaking heart seems smaller because I have allowed my awareness to grow larger. I'm not repressing the pain, but I'm not clinging to it either. Allowing the pain to be there in all of its hot fury and thunderous power, all of its gut-wrenching and heartbreaking anguish. Yet, I recognize that this too will pass. In fact, it is already passing, as is everything. When we allow our awareness to be vast and open like the sky, we give our pain the room to do what it must do. Indeed, what everything must do. Be born, be known, and pass away. Lift our preferences and prejudices when we let go of our likes and dislikes, when we release our attachment to how we think things should be, we may notice the core sensation at the very conception of experience itself. We discover the very context of the experience itself. Through the cultivation of equanimity, we may rest in that context of experience without getting drawn in by the content of each experience. At that point, the sensations of the context, each and every sensation arising, can guide us back to the eternal, timeless, present moment. Rest right there.
Well, I hope you enjoyed my guided meditation offering, the poem and the commentary to follow. So just to bring that to what I was reading there, to present moment experiences, right? We're always happy to rest in the present moment, except for this present moment, or except for whatever is arising that's causing our discomfort, right? When everything's nice and warm and cozy, it's, it's easy to be in the present moment. But when the, the challenges are there, we all often fall into that reactivity, that reactivity of that shouldn't be happening, I want this. That very, very common human drive of pushing away the discomfort and grasping at comfort. It's that that drive, that tendency uh, that's causing so much imbalance in the world. Because discomfort is always there. And we can grasp at the next thing and that might alleviate our discomfort for a week, 10 days, maybe just an hour. But eventually the discomfort comes again whether it's in the form of an argument or a headache or a stomach ache or uh, lack of your favorite food, not being able to go outside to see your friends, uh, whatever is on the news that's causing discomfort. And those are all valid things to be, to get uncomfortable about. We all have our lines, we all have the, our buttons, we all get triggered and feel, we all feel discomfort as a human uh, experience. It can't be avoided. It's a part of having a human nervous system is the experience of discomfort. And so the real gem of this type of meditation practice is cultivating the ability to rest in the experience of discomfort. Even if it's just for a moment or two, the discomfort arises, you feel it, you acknowledge it. Then you can ask yourself, can I rest with this? Maybe the answer is, yeah, I can rest. That's not so bad. It's just a little headache. It'll go away. I'll have some water, take a nap. Don't have to, you know, reach for the trigger, don't have to go into a knee-jerk reaction uh, to push away the discomfort and grasp at comfort. That's good. That resting unplugs that reactivity and you can address the situation through present moment awareness. There's so much relief in that. There's so much uh, circumventing suffering. Even if you can just rest for a moment, somebody says, something nasty to you, for example. I know that would never happen to any of you out there, but sometimes it happens to me. So somebody says something nasty to me, can I rest with this? You know, the anger might be coming up, body's clenching, getting tense. Can I rest with this? Yeah, I can rest with that. I know this too shall pass so it fades away, then I can go and respond to that person. Now, if I didn't have a meditation practice, I didn't have this practice of resting, maybe somebody would say something mean to me and then the anger would arise and I would be so uncomfortable with how anger felt like in my body that I would fall into reaction, I would fall into that habit. Can't have this, must be this way can't have that, must have this. Then I would then maybe punch the guy in the jaw, <laughs> or I'm laughing because this is so out of my character, uh, but uh, and whatever it is, yelling, kicking, punching, screaming, shouting, cursing, whatever the emotional reactivity is to what anger feels like. 
like that. And generally it would be the same reaction that was done before because emotional reactivity is habitual. So by asking that question, anytime discomfort arises, you turn on the news, you see the politician saying something stupid, can I rest with this? Yeah, I can rest with that. Now, that doesn't mean you don't do anything about stupid politicians, <laughs> but what it does mean is that you don't, you know, react emotionally to what that feels like in your body. You don't then go out and, and cause a riot or, or you go and vote appropriately, or you might, uh, call, you know, bring a peaceful, uh, type of demonstration to bring about social change. Those actions are wonderful when they're taken free from emotional reactivity. When we move forward with social action to try to change things, even if it's on a global scale or one-to-one -one scale, let's say, if you move forward to try to uh, remedy the discomfort, if you do that with emotional reactivity, it's just gonna come back to you. So for example, had I punched the guy in the jaw who was saying mean things to me, he probably would have punched me back then I would have punched him back. And you see this in politics all the time, particularly uh, in America. I'm most familiar with American politics, so I can speak educatedly about that. Um, you know, you have uh, a liberal side of the government that maybe wins an election or two and, and they celebrate and they, 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 yay, and they rub it in the faces of the, of the, of the conservatives. And then, then, the conservatives attack back even harder and the pendulum swings to that side. And then they're like, yay, 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 and they rub it in the faces of the liberals. And then, it, and then the liberals strike back even harder. Yay, 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 and, it, and then it does this. And this is the problem that we're seeing in America right now is that div division has gotten so wide and the pendulum has to swing so far in each direction and as the pendulum swings, it drags, doom, 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 it's hitting human beings and, and killing human beings and suffering from human beings each time that pendulum swings back and forth. And it's all because people are moving forward with, for social change and activism, but they're moving forward with the face of the ego rather than moving forward from a heart of compassion, from a heart of equanimity, they're moving forward with a face of ego, with anger, with, uh, with um, self-righteousness that only will ever cause a kickback back and forth like that, giving rise to more and more suffering. So, I hate to be cliche, but the answer to all of that is really loving kindness. To really listen to what people are saying, even if their argument seems so outlandish, to recognize that they are a part of us that the, the seed of human behavior, all human behavior is housed in each one of our hearts and minds. And that person's behaving in that way because certain seeds got watered in their heart and mind and certain seeds didn't. And we're behaving in the way we behave because certain seeds got watered in our heart and certain ones didn't. But we all have the same potentials we're all capable of the love of Mother Teresa, and we're all capable of the hatred and ignorance of Adolf Hitler. And so to move forward with that type of awareness, that type of compassion, that type of equanimity, So I hope that helps.
getting lots of interesting questions here I'm seeing on the screen, so thank you for that. Keep them coming in. I will be doing the Q&A on Sunday. Uh, just a few words before I sign off here. Um, please, please, please do practice your social distancing. Uh, wash your hands, sanitize often, stay safe two to three meters apart. I, I prefer three meters because then you have an extra meter to work with. Uh, it, it, you know, only go out for essentials, order takeout food when you can, stay home, watch some good movies, watch some good Facebook live programs. Uh, there's some really great offerings on, there's yoga, there's Reiki, there's lots of great music, there's lots of great meditation, uh, and not only this one, but many, many others. Uh, so stay home, entertain yourself, read a good book. Um, every, every hour that you stay home, you might be saving a life. You might be saying, saving five lives. So stay home when you can. I know not all, all of us have that luxury. Um, not all of us have a place where we can stay home in. Um, but those of us who do, please, please, please exercise that luxury. And, um, and we're, we're going we're gonna to be fine. We're going to get through this. So lots of love, uh, lots of light, and I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you very much for joining.